space coconut. Okay, uh, today we're gonna talk about how the devs don't seem to be on the same planet when talking about the Chapter 18 life changes, the No Bloodlust weekend, and the dire need for a balance patch. Before I get into this one, be sure to sub if you're new and hit the bell so you don't miss any videos in the future. If you ever want to discuss anything you see in my videos, follow me on Twitch where I'm live every Saturday with random streams during the week. Join the Discord if you want to talk about anything with other coconuts, as well as find out when those random streams will be, and have a chance to be on the Space Whisperer podcast. Links to everything are in the description. Today's video is brought to you by the term Tone Deaf. Having or showing an obtuse insensitivity or lack of perception, particularly in matters of public sentiment, opinion, or taste. The devs prove on a regular basis that they don't really listen to the players when it comes to even the simplest of things in the game. Once upon a time, Gearhead was revealed in a PTB and was subsequently nerfed even though its original power level had it relegated to the bargain bin of perks that did the same job, but better. Today, we get Coup de Gras, a perk that can only be used once when survivors finish a generator with a benefit that was debatably useful depending on how it was used. In true behavior fashion, this meme level nearly useless perk was nerfed. I suppose the geniuses in the balance department felt that a 100% lunge increase was too powerful for a survivor-controlled, limited-use perk with no passive benefit to the killer. And to my knowledge, there were no complaints about how powerful and how useful this perk would have been in its PTB state. But at the very least, there was a discussion about its usefulness depending on whether you saved it or used it in particular situations. Aside from really incomprehensible balance choices, we have the clear noob level testing skills of the team as well. It took regular players a single match. Well, at least those who were able to play before the game crashed or the killer got locked in place to learn that Victor was hard countered by lockers and that they could disable Victor once the killer swapped to Charlotte when she went to go to the locker from wherever it was she was standing. Either the devs didn't think about the possibility of locker counterplay, or they were fine with how it completely shut the killer down. Both instances highlight how poorly qualified they are to make these decisions without adult supervision. As mentioned in the last Space Whisperer podcast though, it is very good that they recognize the issues that the community brought up in regards to lockers and are creating an entirely new mechanic to fix it. Unfortunately for everyone, they will still be releasing the DLC before it's actually finished. I'm going to get it for free with Iridescent Shards and I highly advise you to do the same. If you plan on using Oryx Cells to get what could possibly be the weakest killer in the game, I strongly urge you to wait until they finish developing the killer first, but do whatever you want. As I'm writing this, I'm looking through the sea of forum posts moved to the feedback section of the forums, otherwise known as the Abyss. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but if you want to see the real posts of the community regarding the issues people are having with the game, you have to go to the feedback and suggestions section of the forums, and not general. The bots like to send critical posts there where they believe that no one in the community will bother to go looking. I've actually been checking that forum more than general because of the sheer number of posts that are made and moved there on a daily basis. As I was scrolling, I found this one that was completely closed with no comments and moved by our favorite forum mod. It said, There's simply no justification for removing bloodlust in this game's current state. I was reverse wraith on suffocation pit, and even with no mistakes and proper pathing, I could barely hit the survivors as I just entered bloodlust. I could barely hit the survivors as I just entered bloodlust 1 at many points of the map. The number of T walls and safe pallets on that map is disgusting and this is a reworked map. I wouldn't have even gotten close to the 4k I got if the Fang hadn't decided to kill herself first hook for no reason. Killers such as he will be played even less than they are now. Now, I'm not sure why that post needed to be closed. What do you think? As silly as it sounds, there are probably going to be two sides to the forum soon. The unhappy players posting in the feedback, and the happy players posting in general. Definitely let me know what you think about this and start posting and chatting in the feedback section since that's where the real discussions seem to happen. But maybe I'm just being silly. 
Anyway, about that Q&A stream that's going to be happening soon, they specifically want to answer questions about Chapter 18, and I've already asked my question. I asked if they anticipated the problem with the lockers, or if they didn't realize it until after players brought it up. The reality of these Q&As is that we're probably going to hear the same thing we've heard for years. That's something we'd like to do. We can't discuss that at this time. Irrelevant lore questions? And irrelevant design questions like, why does Charlotte wear a hat? And of course, we're going to hear, Victor is not a baby, stop calling him that, he doesn't like it. I'll be keeping count, and I'll definitely talk about their answers in the next video. But whatever they say, we know that their statements aren't going to make a lot of sense from a player's point of view. There are so many instances where the devs make changes that no one really asked for, or in the case of Bloodlust, isn't the right time for that kind of information to be taken. There are a lot of factors that Bloodlust tries to help with, but until the devs fix those other problems, we're going to simply see this band-aid fester, while more problems pile onto the mess that is Dead by Daylight. I know we'll just wait and see, and many people on the forums will say, you don't know what they'll say, just wait and see. Those particular idiots don't understand that the devs don't learn from their past mistakes. They like to make the same mistakes over and over and over again. But maybe they make those stupid mistakes so people like me can make fun of them for it. I'm still waiting for them to prove me wrong after all. Like the video if you like the video, and dislike the video if you think the devs aren't out of touch with the player base. Until next time, I'll see you in the fog.